yesterday, I went to Barnes and Noble and I never ever go to Barnes and Noble and I spent an entire hour there and I was just happy as a clam. It was just, it was wonderful. Um, I just, I love being in a bookstore. In fact, if I am struggling with my mental health and I am able to get myself up and go out, I will simply just go to a bookstore, any bookstore, and just walk around and look at books because that boosts my mental health so much. I love it. I don't like loud places and bookstores are quiet. Um, I love libraries too. And so it's just such a peaceful place um, and so healing for me to be around something I love so, so much. So enough about that. Very sentimental about books. Feeling very grateful uh, today in general. So um, but first things first, look at my like color coordination. We have the pink hair, okay? But we also have these maroon gemstones, maroon nail polish, and you can't see the glitter in it, but it's glittery and gorgeous if you shine light on it, and then a maroon top. I mean, <laughs> anyways, um, I, so yeah, I have, I think, I have a decent amount actually, so half of these I bought at Barnes and Noble, I bought four books at Barnes and Noble yesterday. And then the other ones are uh, things that came in Amazon packages recently. So I figured what I'll do is um, I'll talk about them individually, why I chose them, um, and I will read the little excerpt for you because I can't give you a review as I have not read them yet, but I'm sure you'll see them in future book review videos. So let's get into it. So um, I'm going to start with the ones that I got at Barnes & Noble yesterday. Um, I, I think the first one I grabbed was The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Um, I know. It's shocking that I haven't read this book. Everybody's read this book. Um, also, I felt like the cover is so pretty and it's like textured. Philosopher who um, I believe 
is like a founder in stoicism, maybe, potentially. But anyways, um, I was listening to this, uh, the Philosophize This podcast, and he had quoted a lot of things from Marcus Aurelius, and I'm very interested in philosophy. Um, I can't, I took a philosophy class in college, but, um, and I found it fascinating. I think philosophy is, is such an entertaining, um, avenue of study. But anyways, um, he was quoting a lot of stuff from this book in particular, and I actually didn't, like, think that you could actually buy this book. I don't know, I was, I assumed it'd be, like, some, like, ancient tome that was in a museum that you could, like, that's been quoted. It's probably gonna be pretty heavy, um, and, yeah, I'm just interested, um, to read about the stuff, because, like I said, the quotes were very intriguing, so... If you know of any other, uh, philosophy, I've been learning a lot about Nietzsche, I think it's Nietzsche, Nietzsche, um, I think his first name's Frederick, but any interesting philosophy things, let me know, or books. I would love a book that breaks down, like, kind of gives you, like, the spark notes version of all the different philosophies, kind of like the key points of each philosophy. I have yet to find a book like that, so if you know of one, Please comment below. Um, I'm interested in philosophy, but I don't have time to study it in depth every single one. But it is a um, interest of mine. So, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Like I said, I think he's like the founder of Stoicism, but maybe I'm getting mixed up with someone else. In fact, um, I could look it up. I'm gonna look it up real quick. BRB. I looked it up. He was a Stoic philosopher, so I just want to remember if I was remembering that correctly, but Stoicism is an extremely interesting branch of philosophy that I've just been really interested in. I've been watching some YouTube videos about it, so. Um, okay, anyways, next is, this is so random. Um, this was on my Goodreads list for a while, and I was surprised because of who the author was, and I was like, interesting. Nora Roberts. Yeah, like the romance writer, Nora Roberts. Um, she started writing like fantasy fiction and, well, I don't know. I don't know much about her. Maybe she has written it before, but apparently this book is really good. It has like a four point something rating on Goodreads and the, um, synopsis sounds so interesting. So it's been on my Goodreads list for a while and then I saw it yesterday um, at Barnes and Noble, and I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot, and honestly, I don't have anything about, against Nora Roberts, I don't, um, I just don't know her work, and I know she's kind of, like, she, like, writes a ton, like, that woman's written probably hundreds of books, uh, romance books, like, specifically, and you, I remember seeing, like, her books, like, specifically on display at grocery stores as a kid, with, like, the, you know, weird covers of, like, Fabio, uh, standing on a cliff over a mountain, <laughs> um, shirtless, of course, so, I mean, girl, I'm sure she's got, like, she's rolling in money, I'm sure, but anyways, this is apparently a very good series, and it's newish, uh, but it's called The Awakening, and it's the first book in the Dragon Art Legacy, 
we'll see. Like I said, it's highly rated, so um, could be good. And the last one I got at Barnes & Noble um, was this Book of Night by Holly Black. And there's like a little card that said, um, The Cruel Prince, but for adults. And I was like, perfect, because I actually liked The Cruel Prince series and I read it. Um, but it is young adult and um, it says, uh, exclusive Barnes & Noble edition. But I think this just came out, I think. Um, but I've always loved Holly Black. Um, as a teenager and as a, a preteen, I read like all her books. I just loved her. She would always write about fairies in like this very dark way. And I just really gravitated towards that um, as a kid. And so I saw this and I'm excited. I, I would love for her to just kind of delve more into adult uh, fantasy fiction. Um, but I literally didn't even read the excerpt. I just was like, yeah, I like her. I like the way she writes for it. She's very descriptive. Charlie Hall has never found a look, or excuse me, a lock as she couldn't pick, a book she couldn't steal, or a bad decision she couldn't make, or wouldn't make. Can't read. She spent half her life working for glow mists, magicians who manipulate shadows to peer into locked rooms, strangle people in their beds, or worse. Glomis guard their secrets greedily, creating an underground economy of grim, war, grim, grim I can never say this word, grim wars. And to rob their fellow magicians, they need Charlie Hall. Now she's trying to distance herself from past mistakes, but bartending at local dive, she's still entirely too close to the corrupt underbelly of the Berkshires. Not to mention that her sister, Bosie, is desperate for magic and that Charlie's shadowless and possibly soulless boyfriend, Vince, has been hiding things from her. When a terrible figure from her past returns, Charlie descends into a maelstrom of murder and lies. Determined to survive, she's up against a cast of doppelgangers, mercurial billionaires, glow mists, and the people she loves best in the world all trying to steal a secret that will give them a vast and terrible power. See, so, yeah, I don't know, it sounds dark, and um, I think that'll be, that'll be good. I did like the Quill Prince series, though, like I said, um, and I've read a lot of her books. A lot. She's a very talented uh, fantasy, loves to write about Faye, um, and, like, the dark side of Faye. changes you get older. 
fantasy and fabulism. I don't know what fabulism is, but I'm gonna have to look that up because <laughs> it sounds up my alley. Here are eight startling stories that map the realities of women's lives and the violence visited upon their bodies. Earthly, earthy and otherworldly, antic and sexy, queer and caustic, comic and deadly serious. Her body and other parties enlarges the possibilities of contemporary fiction. So, I imagine I'll have some kind of messed up stuff in it, but fictional short stories. Um, heard it was good, so. Iceland, if you want to throw on Iceland. 
You know what I mean, okay? <laughs> I really think that I could live happily there. Not only is it, you know, the happiest place in the world, according to that uh, global or gross happiness index, but um, I live in the United States and I'm not going to talk about how I feel about that really, but uh, you know, in the next coming years I might want to uh, have kids and I don't want to raise kids in the United States. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not trying to have a discussion about it, but anyways, I'm wondering, you know, if it's possible for me to immigrate to one of those Nordic countries because there's something that's calling me. I've been watching Yo Jonah, 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 Jinden, Yinden. Jonah Yinden, I think. Jonah Yinden. <laughs> Look her up. Um, on YouTube, and she lives in remote Sweden. And I'm just obsessed with her life. And I understand that people put, you know, only the good things on YouTube. I get that.
relationship because there's a lot about it I like but some of it I'm just like Ugh. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and sweet dreams.